All right, guys, welcome to RC Mojo. This week, I've not really had time to make a normal video. The plan was to work on the sand scorcher, but with the bad weather for painting and other commitments, it really hasn't got very far. Instead, we're going to have a bit of a preview of the electronics for the WPL E1. First, a quick look at where we are so far. Right, so I wasn't really too happy with the stock transmitter. It works, but it's a bit small and not all that nice to use. Instead, I'm going to be using a proper radio. This is an old jumper T16, but you get the idea. It's a proper hobby grade unit. The jumper already handles the camera gimbal on the back, as well as the head tracker that's taped to the FPV headset. All we really need to add is a couple of ESCs to drive the track motors. But as some of you'll know, I'm a bit prone to feature creep. So I started designing a complete control system. It really started because I wanted to use one of these little Radio Master receivers. It uses the FRSky or FreeSky D16 protocol and connects using SBUS. So rather than pulse widths, it sends the channel data through a serial connection. Far easier to handle and far more reliable. The trouble is, other than some rather posh servos, there's not much that can use SBUS directly, so we need some extra electronics. Before we get to that though, let's open up the E1 and see what makes it go. Now I've cheated a bit, as it's already been taken apart, but it's just a case of removing the four outermost screws on the bottom, then the whole upper hole comes away. There's a few wires to deal with, but they have connectors, so you can just unplug them. At the front would be the WPL control board, which is quite a neat little thing. It's got two motor drive ICs and some sort of controller radio chip doing the rest. Very nice, especially with the connectors rather than everything being hardwired. But it really doesn't do what we need, so it needs replacing. Initially, my thought was to make something that takes the S bus as an input, then uses the channels to control some lights and the gimbal and the motors. But that didn't last long. What I ended up with was this little guy. It's a logic board for a modular system. It has the power supply, microcontroller and connectors for various modules. The idea being you just connect what you need for the model. So it's not just for the E1 anymore. It should also be able to run Tamiya trucks and many others too. The first module is the RC module. There's eight servo connections, none of which are directly linked with any of the RC channels, so you'll be able to select their source as needed. Next to the servo connections is the SBUS connector for the receiver, which will also be backwards compatible with eight channel PPM for other radios. And on the right is the connector that goes off to the logic board. All the connectors on the logic board are different sizes, so it's only going to fit in one of them. OK, now we can power up the jumper and we can plug a battery into the battery connector on the logic board. Now, the firmware is at a stage where there's just enough to make it do stuff. There's still a long way to go to get everything working. So right now the servo connections don't do anything, but if we move the left stick around, we can see the onboard LED change its brightness and colour. A simple little test, but it shows the system is indeed working. The next module is the programming card. It uses mostly off-the-shelf parts from hobby electronics stores. There's a display with buttons from Pi Mori, and to drive it is a Raspberry Pi Pico. The only custom bit is the connection for the 4-pin connector on the bottom, but that's only 4 wires. Again, the firmware is far from complete, so there's just enough to show it doing something. If we connect it and power up the system again, we get a channel monitor of most of the channels. There's not quite enough space to add the rest, but for right now it's a good test program. The plan is for it to be able to configure the logic board, choosing options and things like that. And of course, a monitor to help with setting things up in the first place. The next module, or modules, is the NeoPixel output. You can buy these in strips where each LED can display any colour and is controlled individually. I've only wired up the first four here, but in theory you could control a couple of hundred with a suitable power supply. Here though, we're going to be using a more reasonable 16 or so. The main trick is you only need three wires going from one to the next, making it ideal for some installs. The LEDs in the video do look a bit blown out, but you can still see the colours changing. 
The next module hasn't got any firmware to drive it just yet, so I'm going to turn off the system. It's an off-the-shelf LED driver with 24 outputs. I've used the same board on many other projects. The good thing is you don't need resistors as each output is constant current and you can set the brightness individually. Ideal for things like brake and tail lights. Okay, another off the shelf module. We have a two and a half watt class D amplifier for sound. It'll drive a four ohm speaker with an adequate sound level. It's not super loud, but good enough. I've used the same amplifier for a few projects and it does the job at a nice small size. Again, there's no firmware to control it just yet, but it's otherwise ready. And this one is the last module and a special one for the E1. It's a dual motor driver that fits up in the space where the stock controller lived. We just offer it up and fit the stock screw. The motors then just plug in. There's a 10 pin connector that goes off to the logic board for control. Now the 10 pin is designed to be general purpose. So on a Tamiya lorry, it might be used for a radio for a wireless trailer. Or maybe if you only want a couple of LEDs, it could be used instead of the Neo pixels or the 24 channel module. You just need to configure it. So, well, that's about it so far. It's still early, of course, as most of it doesn't actually work yet. But hopefully you can see where it's going. You never know, I might actually finish this one and start selling it. Either way, it's been a fun project so far, and we'll have another look when it's far enough along that we've got the E1 up and running. If nothing else, we should have a far better control range. The stock WPL radio does struggle a bit when there's lots of other RC trucks around. Anyway, that's it for this week. Hopefully we'll have some more traditional RC content next time. Sand Scorcher most likely. The weather does look like it's supposed to be fairly good, so I might get to do some painting. Right, as always then, thanks for watching. Like if you like, subscribe if you haven't, and leave a comment if there's something on your mind. Bye guys!